guest users and guest password and provide different users different roles and assign different privileges to them. So we will see in this module how we will achieve that so the objectives of the create user logins and give them the access accordingly run commands from super user getting elevated permissions manage permissions for files and directories and modify and add user permissions and user groups so let's start user administration first of all users in linux a user is anyone who uses a computer the system has a name for each account it creates for example we have seen in previous uh, slides and videos that i have in my system have created a username with vikas name so every user has got its own name system has a name for each account it creates and it is the name by which person gains access to use it linux support multiple user to be logged in the system managing user is done for the purpose of security by limiting access in certain specific ways a user or account of a system is uniquely identified by a numerical number called uid and there are some reserved names which may not be used such as root so by default in any linux distribution root is the name which is already present in the system you cannot create a user a new user with root name so let's come to the user configuration part as we have discussed one can contain create multiple accounts for logging in the linux each user have different privileges the user having the highest authority can restrict the other user to add new users or the data he has access to so for example if you someone has access to root user and if i am access to some another user of some another group the root user has privilege to stop me from accessing some files by default one account named root has access to all the files and perform every action so where user information is being stored so actually there are three files if you create any system and go on writing password command p-a-double-s-w-d it will prompt you for entering a new password and re-enter a new password it will change your password so what it does is whenever you run this command it stores the user account information for the system actually it binds it to another folder which is named as etc shadow which stores the password for various account and by default it is not accessible to anyone except root user so if i'm a user called vikas and i want to access etc shadow it won't be accessible to me yes etc password will be accessible to me i can change my password but i can't access etc shadow files then comes etc group so every user is made up of some group so every there's a hierarchy like there are groups and in the group there are different users so in etc group it contains the different groups of the system so if we go to etc password file we will see something like this as an output so what it suggests over here is if we see line number 10 or line number 11 the first line is the username so the first username might be polydate and the second username is ubuntu the second line is password which is not being shown over here it is being moved to etc shadow file and it will be only visible to root user then the third one is user id so every user has got its own user id which is mapped to some of the group so we can see by default the root has a group root group has group id as equals to one and root has got user id as equals to one so if you create any new user in the group of root it will have the access the elevated access of root user because it is of group root but it will have different user id similarly we have seen over here the group id is one which is of root but the user id is 111 but for the ubuntu case the group id is different so ubuntu has got different group id than root it is not the root which is the group for ubuntu also the user id is different then the home directory for ubuntu the home directory is home ubuntu for pollinate the home directory is where cache pollinate and the default bash so as we have seen the default cell script these days which are this is the most popular one is bin bash so the default bash is bin bash now getting to the shadow file so the same password which was there same user which was there in password file the same one is here with the name of ubuntu this is the password which is in encrypted form then comes the time which is in utc which is last modified time then it suggests 
minimum days before password can be changed by default there is no expiry or no prompt to change your password in any one to machine maximum days that's why minimum days before password can be changed is shown as zero similarly maximum days before password must be changes a very huge number that is 9999 days then warning days before password expiration is seven but it is of no use because there is no minimum days before password expiration so let's talk about super user super user is commonly known as root which has got a user id of zero and group id of zero so it has it is by default created anything any machine which is any linux distribution which has been created has got its user as root it doesn't have a password by default one can assign it by command as sudo password root so what happens is whenever you do sudo minus i it never asks you for the password of root it always asks you the, for the password of your own username even if they are giving you the elevated permissions of root user because root user doesn't have any password by default they don't ask you the password of root they want to ask you the password of your own user it is advisable that you give a strong password for root one should only use this privilege for a small interval of for a specific task and then go back to normal user because it is a security breach once someone has got access to root user he can do anything with the machine inexperienced user can cause serious harm to os and may also leave security vulnerability if they have got access to root user then how to switch users so for example i am a user with the username of ubuntu how shall i change my user account so if username not provided it takes root by default once command is given it asks for the password of the user if correct password is provided it opens the cell for that user otherwise it exits and return to the original user for example i have entered i have logged into my machine with the vikas username then i go to sudo command and i don't write anything i just do sudo it will automatically redirect me to the root user and if i do sudo ubuntu then it will redirect me to the ubuntu user and then it will ask the password of the ubuntu user root doesn't require the password to switch to other users so if you are in root you are the super user you don't need any permission to jump to any other user sudo adding sudo runs command with user privileges so by default it is root if user is not men mentioned as we already discussed so if you are just prepending sudo command over any of the commands so for example if i am creating a directory mkdir at eureka and i am not giving sudo it may not have the permission to create a directory in root folder but if i provide sudo and prepend sudo over mkdir it will be able to create folder into the root folder also so permissions for sudo access is stored in etc sudoers by default new added user don't have sudo permissions so for that also there are scripts there are lines that for all any new upcoming user we can guarantee it that it gets the sudo access if it is not if you don't want that if you want to provide it after you are adding user you can use this command sudo g password minus a student sudo so what it will do is it will grant access to the users so student of the command sudo so let's check it so right now i am logged in with some user vikas so if i go to who am i it will be vikas and if i go to etc password i go for win it is showing but if i go for shadow it gives me an error permission denied in the last line you can see that now what i will do is i will give it sudo win etc shadow because passwords are really being stored in shadow it asks me for the password of vikas i go for evc and now i can see the file shadow so that's how sudo works now let's see how to add a new user so user add is the command so for example i have to create an let's take this as an input sudo user add student and then configure it so we are seeing over here is that previously i ran tail command and i just wanted the last two lines of etc password find what it gives me was there was a bind user and stu user now ran that command user add student now if i ran the same command again the last two lines of etc password i can see there is a new line student which has got new user id new group id new home of itself 
So this is the example how you can use user add command simply do user add and username just prepend sudo over it if you're not logged in as root user always prepend sudo over it so if i want because what happens generally is if i add a user suppose it to be xyz so if i'm doing sudo user add minus m xyz what it will do is it will create a folder of home xyz by default in home it will be given the same folder name which is the name of the user but if we want to give it a predefined home directory we can give option as minus d and then provide the predefined directory name if there's already one directory existing over there if i want to create a user with expiry date that after this date the user expires and has got no rights on the system i can provide it with minus e command so there are options for user add minus c includes user full name minus e date when the user account will be disabled minus g specifies users default group so i can create a user with default group as root capital minus g specifies which groups to add user to. so if i have got a previous group of ubuntu or stu a student i can provide user add minus g and then group name minus m specifies the user's home directory minus d specifies the predefined directory of the user which we have already seen minus p specifies user's password so we will be creating a user's password if we will be adding user add minus p also and then minus s specifies the default shell for the user which is bin bash so delete a user just like user add for deleting user there is user del so it's kind of same right now what we have seen is if we have ran tail minus two command we can see previous student was there and there is a new user user one with uid 1004 and gu group id 1004 home directory user one now the system has deleted user del student then we are back again to the original stage where we used to have stu and now user one which is newly added but the student which we added now is being deleted how to modify a user so things which you want to modify in user so want to modify the expiration time of the user i would want to modify password of the user so these are the basic things which you want to change even after creating a user so to assign a password what you have to do is just like root which we do did pseudo password root you have to give pseudo password vikas or pseudo password ubuntu or pseudo password student it will prompt you for the username new password and assign the new password use commands to modify the configuration pseudo user mod so it will modify the user and then the different options for example if you want to modify date when it will be disabled so we have seen that minus e is there for group minus g is there for home directory minus m is there so we can also do that we can use user mod minus p and change the password user mod minus g and change the group so these things are also possible now whenever you are giving a password what we saw in the earlier stage was minimum days to change the password was zero and maximum days to change the password was 99999 so there was no way that password was aging so we have got password aging policies too just for being on the better side of security it is advisable to change your password time to time so what command we use over here is chas it changes the age of the user so chas command on linux changes the password related information the information is used by the system to determine when a user must change his or her password so for example if i write change student or change user one or change ubuntu chh ubuntu what it will give me it will give me a prompt where it will ask me minimum days to change the password if i specify it as 10 so maximum days it will re ask these questions because these questions were never asked to me prior to this if I use command like chas it will ask me minimum days to change the username uh, password maximum days to change the username's password and also it will ask me since which day i will love to have the notification that your password is expiring please change the password so the option for ch is is set minimum number of days before password change set maximum number of days before password change so if i don't provide a minimum number of age and i provide maximum number of age after that age it will be obviously deleted so account aging information if there's any account aging information just give minus l command without any space and set password inactive after expiration minus for the hyphen space l if you want to set an expiration date don't want to specify days in how many days you want to expire it if you want to give the exact date minus e is the option 
and set the last date of the password change minus D is the option. So let's check the demo. So what it suggests is CH minus L. It lists down everything. So what is the scenario right now? For example, if I run the same command in my system. If I do CH age. So what I've done is I have list the current status of the user Vikas. So it says the last password change was done on September 21st, 2019. The password expires never. Password gets inactive never. Account expires never. Maximum number of days between password changes. Minimum number is zero. Maximum is 99,999 days. So it is basically never. If I want to change it, what I have to do is just give ch age and username. What it has given me is permission denied. Now let's do with sudo. Now if I start with sudo, it asks me the minimum password age. So I'm again specifying it as zero because I don't want to do it. Nine 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 nine. Last password date change was let me do it 2018. This I can change because it won't hurt me anyway. Expiration date I want to change it to 14. Password inactive, let it be default. Account expiration, let it be default. And now let's run that command again. So what's seen the change over here is last password reset change was previously september 21st now it is september 22nd which i have changed and number of days expiration of warning before expiration is 14. so this is how you can change things with chs command so let's get back group management so every user has is associated to some group as we have seen every user id is associated with some of the group id so Linux group is a mechanism to organize a collection of users. Each group is associated with unique ID called the group ID, which we have seen in ETC password folder. There are two types of group, a primary group and a supplementary group. Each user is a member of a primary group and of zero or more than zero supplementary group. Users may be added to an existing group to utilize the privilege access it grants. So for example, if I want to escalate the permissions for any user, what I will do is I will give it the access to the root group ID to the same user. I can do user mod and by minus G option, I can provide the group ID as root. Every user by default gets its own group unless restricted manually. So if I create any user Vikas, it will be getting a group name of Vikas only. So user groups, the group details are defined in ATC group file. By default, every group user gets its own group. So I'm talking about student. It will be of student username only. Then comes if I want to create a new group. So like user add, there is again a command group add. Similarly, like user add. So a new group can be created and user can be made part of it. A command changes the value in the file etc login.defs. The default ID for minimum group ID is thousand. Group ID starts from here. So apart from root group ID, which is zero. All the group ID starts from 1000. So we'll be seeing group ID as 1001, 1002, 1003, and so on. There is no limit on number of the users in a group. So you can have n numbers of users in a group. So command is simple, pseudo group add, group name. Minus F, then again options. Minus F, exit successfully if the group already exists. Minus G, use group ID for the new group. If I don't want any default group ID to be associated with it, like 1001 or 1002, I want it to be given a group ID of 5001. So I can use minus G command and give it the group ID as 5001. Minus P uses this password for the new group. So any user which wants to associate with this new group will have to insert the same password. Minus K overwrites the ETC login defs, which is the default login for the group. And again, similarly, like user mod, this command group mod, which is for group modification. We will need to modify the users accessing the group or group details based on our requirements. When the maximum limit is reached, a new group entry line is started in etc group. The command modifies the value in etc login .defs. So group mod exit values are 0 for success, 2 for invalid commands in text, 3 for invalid argument to options, 4 specified group doesn't exist, 9 group name already in use, 10 can't update the group. So again, the group mod, what are the changes which you can make in a group? You can change the group ID, you can change the group password, you can add a user account to this group, you can remove a user from this group, and you can also change the name of the group. So just like user del for deletion group, there's again group del. So we may delete a group if it is not required anymore. 
we must delete the user before deleting the primary group for it otherwise it will be in dining stage so let's talk about ownership and permission so we have heard a lot about permissions read write execute permission we have been seeing that there are things like w r x so w is for read r is for write x is for execute so read has got because everything is in binary read has got four write has got value two and execute has got value one that's why it is always decided whenever you are running a cell script you give the user mod as seven double five so that only you the seven is the permission for read plus write plus execute so only you have the permission to read plus write plus execute for the next five seven is the permission for you five is for the group so any other user of the group is able to read your file and execute your file is unable to write or make changes in your file that's why we are always giving seven double five access rather than triple seven so permission for a file or folder the set of permission for a file or folder is in three categories so the three categories are user groups so for example what we just discussed was seven triple five abc.txt so if i'm giving access of 755 to abc.txt which means user has got an access of 7 the group of that user has got an access of 5 and others have got an access of 5 so what are users what are groups and what are others so user is the person who has created that file group is the group in which the person is associated there might be more than one user of that group if the user is of same group he will again have the access to read and execute the cell script and if I give a permission of 754, then others would be giving only the permission to read. So anyone who is not from the same group or same username will be having access to just read the files, not even execute it. So this is the permission. One is for execute, two is for write, three is for write and execute. So this is binary cohesion. As we have seen over here, these the file type that is directory of Ubuntu R W X is read, write, execute, that is seven. And then XR is group permission. So it has got permission, the same group, Ubuntu group has got permission to execute and read. And any other user who's not from the same group has not even got permission to read the file, has got permission only to execute the file. So they got they are not able to get the source code. So default permission for a file is 664. While it is 775 for a directory. So 664 means all the file has got a permission to read, write, and read. That means none of the file has got a permission to execute. You can change it by setting the unmask value for the user. To check current unmask value, use command umask. It shows the total octal value. A file gets a permission of default base value 666. Unmask value and folder gets permission of default base 777. Now changing ownership. So we have seen three things: owner of the file group of the file and then others so if you want to change the owner of a file what you have to do is run ch1 command and then give the username for example there was a file called abc.txt which was previously associated to some user called ubuntu now i want to change that i have to change that i will do ch1 vikas file name abc.txt so the file which was there for ubuntu user will now be owned by the username vikas Similarly, the same thing can be done for the group two. CH group change. Ownership of a file is specified in the specific format. User, user group, group, user, colon. User is the name of the user to own this file, user group, the user and the group to own the file separated by a semicolon. Only group gives you the group to own the file. User is removed from here. User is the owner, changed to the user, and owning the group is login group of user. Options for CH1, again, minus c displays the information of file which is changed minus f does not displays output minus r operates on file and directories recursively minus h if the file system is symbolic link traverse it open operate on the how files and directories so if i check ls minus ltr command i can see that there are root users for every directory over there in the system is having username as root and file as roots even hello.txt so what it has done in the next command the owner of the hello.txt has been changed to ubuntu now the group id has not been changed the group is not been changed so group is still root group but the user is now ubuntu so this is how you can change the owner of the file then ch mode if you want to change the permission of the file like over here we have got permission on hello.txt as read write read and read there is no execute permission to hello.txt 
if you want to give it a hello.txt permission, what we have to do is chmod744. So what will happen is seven indicates read, write, execute. So it will be RWXRR. So this is what ch mode does. It changes the permission. Options for the ch mode again, minus F, it suppresses the error messages, minus R, it changes files and directory recursively. If I have to change, give a permission to hold directory recursively, then the same permission should go on all the files. Then we can use minus R command. Then minus C output diagnostic message for change in every file made. So all the file which will be changed will be shown over here if you use minus C command. So let's see the example for CH mode. So the command is ls minus LTR again, and we can see that there's a file called hello.txt. The hello.txt has got permission of read, write, execute, read, write, execute, and read. So what we have done is we have done cat hello.txt. So this is a hello file that was the content of that file. Now I'm changing the user permission of for that file. It is 222. So 2 is right. So I'm giving the right permission to everyone, but not read permission to anyone. So if someone wants to open this file now, hello.txt, it says permission denied. And again, and if I check the status of hello.txt, it has only got www. There is no read, no execute. Again, ch mode 755, it starts opening. Now it will be having rwx, rx, rx. Now let's talk about spatial permissions. So special permissions is SUID. We have talked about UID in the start of the class. So if a file has to be executed only as a particular user, then instead of modifying the permission for another user, every time we can modify it, always run like it has been run by that user. So the fourth line in CH mode, the first character in CH mode 4664 file name, the first character 4 is the SUID. Example password command which changes our password has only got root access but still works for other users because it is always executed as root is executing it because we have seen that etc password was getting opened even I was there in the user ID Vikas etc shadow was not opening etc password was being opened why it is being opened the reason behind it was SUID so if you change the mod to something like 4664, what it tends to give us, it will always open this file as some pseudo user. So SUID is pseudo user ID. Similar is the case for pseudo group ID. SGID is again the same. So for SGID, again the line is 4. SGID has got the representation of 4. So if we want to merge SUID and SGID, what we can do is, actually SGID has got the representation of 2. Because 010 is 2. 001 is 1, 010 is 2, 100 is 4. So SGID has got a representation of 4. And if we combine 4 and 2, it is 6. So if 110, so if we give a CH mode of 664, then we can merge SUID and SGID. Now let's talk about sticky bit. It is primarily used in shared directories. So for example, it is useful for directories like temp, where user can't delete a file created by another user, even though temp has triple seven permission. So if everyone has got access on temp folder. So if I'm writing some files, for example, TCP dump is running. TCP dump is an application in Linux, which monitors your network and which checks the traffic inflow and outflow in network. So when I'm running any TCP dump, it stores all the packet in the temp folder. And if someone starts deleting it at the same time, it will be an issue. So we assign a sticky bit to it. So rather than giving 664 or anything like that, if I assign ch mode 1664, only root user has permission to delete that file. Then comes the concept of access control list. So we have been studying about user permissions for the users who are in the same user ID or same group. But what if the user ID is not in the same group? User is not of the same user ID or not of the same group. Then ACL comes into picture. It allows permission to user or group even if they are not part of owner or owner group. So in that scenario, we can give the access control list to them. How it is done? Set F setting ACL for file. Set F ACL minus M. The use my group name. Uh, first name is user. Username is user. Group name is a student. So using that username user and group name student, I am giving read write execute access to file.txt and if I check get facl it will give me the same for example get facl file.txt so the file is file.txt owner is ubuntu group is ubuntu owner has got read write permission group has got read write permission 
now i'm there's no where anyone with the name of user or anyone with a group of student mentioned in this control list but what we are giving it we are setting an access control list giving the user id as user and group id group as student giving it read write execute permissions now let's get fsl file.txt what we have right now is user has got read write permission but when user with group name student is there you have got read write execute permission so we are masking a read write execute permission over here now let's talk about hidden files so there are many files which are hidden in uh, linux like bas rc vim rc if you are using vim editor it has got its own rc file bas rc rc local dot d so these are hidden files so any file which starts with dot is a hidden file so if you have to create any hidden file just use dot before your file name so if your file has got name as abc.txt use dot abc.txt and whenever you run command as ls you will never be able to find that file abc.txt until unless you run the command as ls minus a then all the hidden files are also shown so for example ls minus ltr we have done we are not able we are just seeing link directory student tir new.txt and hello.txt but when i appended a in that ls minus ltr a we can see there are hidden directories within and hidden files then file is dot file dot txt the hidden directory is simply dot and dot dot now to check the authenticity of any file there are some ways like checksum md5 sum they have given a specific hash value to every file and to check that the integrity of the file is still maintained we can assure by md5 sum so md5 sum is to verify the integrity of files as any change to a file will change it md5 hash value so if i am writing a file with the name my name is vikas everything is small and i just change the first letter my from small to capital checksum will be changed and this is how we will get to know that this file has been modified so to check whether the file has been modified across the networks when it was shared it is always advisable to use md5 thank you